check it out, see if you guys can see, see the, see the t-shirts here, Ugh. new design, gonna be hitting the Teespring store this week, we already got a design up on there guys, keep gripping and ripping, be sure to check those out in the store tab, right, I also found out in the store tab, I can add the jaw horses, some chainsaws, and some carving tools and whatnot, so when you're watching, I think it pops up one of these little corners, a little shopping bag. You guys click on that, you go there, and it'll, you know, show some of my merch and some of the tools and things like that. You guys will be able to buy through those and uh, help support the channel. So today, though, we're going to be running battery saws. I'm working on a customer order of a dog. I um, already started it the other day, and uh, yeah, got to get going on it today here with you guys. We get this guy wrapped up. We also got this uh, little moose wall hanger. We're gonna see what we can get done on that as well. If you stop in though, be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. All right, guys, I do appreciate it.
man. I hope you guys are having a good day. Let's see if the live chat thing here is working. All right. If you guys want to shop merch, be sure to check out that little shopping bag tab that pops up, the store tab. These shirts, I know we got people watching. These shirts are going to be in the Teespring shop later this week. You guys are here hanging out be sure to give me a thumbs up hit subscribe if you haven't already and if you want to learn to chainsaw carve i have a bunch of beginner videos and tutorials in the uh playlists on the main landing page working on a dog for a customer though I don't do a ton of these i might have to start doing more that's for sure <laughs> Karen, how's it going?
Yeah, definitely a horse. What's going on, guys? Hope you're having a good day. Appreciate you guys hanging out this fine Monday. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. Well, I'm working on a customer order. Normally, I uh, take 
money down when I do orders, right? Half down, that kind of stuff, especially if I'm doing bears. Um, I decided not to do money down on this because I don't do a lot of dogs. I just don't. So, you know, customer dog going for something similar, at least. But we'll see. We got about, I don't even know, half a dozen people asking me to do their dogs. So, you know, trying to make different dogs. This is the first one. If they like it, cool. They'll find a home. If they don't, whatever. Um, then we got another one to do. And then I've got some people that are looking for like um, bulldogs. Uh, what's the other one there? Uh, Doverman, Rottweiler. Uh, I think there's a shepherd in there. Golden Retriever. A lab. So there's a bunch of them people are asking. I haven't taken any money down on them because, again, I don't do a ton of them. I don't really do a lot of dogs, but something I want to start working on. So start doing stuff in that two foot range. Um, you can get shapes and designs down in smaller pieces. I feel like I can, you know, build them up into uh, into something bigger. Yeah, bear and the boss lady. Exactly. You know, if if the person that's requesting this is like, yeah, dude, that's not it. I don't want it. No big deal. Just slap some leave the paint on it, keep it done and bring it around to shows and somebody will be like, can you change the color or they'll absolutely love it and it'll find a home. For me, it's a skill building exercise though, right? Have people, you know, requesting specific things, which normally is a custom order, but when I, again, I don't do a lot, so I'll use it as a, uh, as a skill building exercise to try and do those different species of dogs when I know I don't carve dogs, you know. In the end, it's just like when you're first starting to carve bears. You just you keep going, practicing, progressing. They'll get better as time goes on. And then we'll start charging a million dollars a piece, you know. Hey, check it out. We got some people viewing, though. Hopefully you guys can see it. This is going to be a new shirt in the Teespring shop. Designed it myself. Drew up the chainsaws. That's my artwork. And uh, hopefully to get these uh, in the shop this week. Um, right now we've got Keep Gripping and Ripping t-shirts in the store tab. You guys can, there's a little bag somewhere. You click that and it'll show you the t-shirts and the hoodies that are currently available along with products that I use like the jaw horse and the flap sander um, starting to figure out how to add that stuff to videos so people can click those things and uh, you know be able to make purchases appreciate you guys being here today though Denny M thanks for being here also thanks for being a member I appreciate it what's going on Tony So yeah, working on a dog. If you guys are here hanging out though, we got 18 people watching and five thumbs up. Let's try to make that even. Help me out, give me a thumbs up. If you don't know how to do that, I just learned how. So it's either three little buttons You'll see three little dots down here or three little dots up here. Click that and then you're able to give the video a thumbs up right here on this live feed, all right? And be sure to give me a thumbs up here and also hit subscribe, hit that bell, hit all. And uh, maybe we'll hit 30,000 subscribers before the end of this year. Because if we do, I think I'll give away another brand new chainsaw. So that's what I'm thinking.
want to share with you guys. I'm pretty proud of myself. I hope you all had a good Easter. I had a great Easter. You know what I did for Easter? Nothing. Uh, probably the first day in several months where I sat around on the couch and I uh, watched some TV. I did nothing. It was odd, but uh, you know. Yep. Yep, yep. Hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks a lot there, slow boy. <laughs> advice. Well, I can give you advice. Just depends on what you are looking to have advice in. You know, as far as carving goes, it's all about practice. Be safe. Keep gripping and ripping and just practice. What's going on, Art Jesper? Tony? Bear and the boss lady Ben here. Tony Z. Carving cartoon characters. Well, I don't really carve a whole lot. I don't really carve a whole lot of a lot of things. I just go for it. So just like carving anything you've never carved before, study it ahead of time. That will help you out in the long run. Study pictures, study angles, study anatomy and design, and that kind of stuff. For me, it's a little bit of study. It's kind of sketching up what it is that I want to do and uh, sort of thinking about my cuts as I go. Um, you know, sometimes you got to put in the legwork for the results. And sometimes you do what I do, which is you just wing it and you go for it based off of a picture a potential customer sent you and say, hey, I'm just going to go for it. Because sometimes, sometimes the best way to learn is through your mistakes. So if you're going to create a piece you've never done before, right, you're just going to go for it. It's all right to make mistakes. Like just keep pushing through. Just like this, if this dog comes out like crap in a few minutes, as I keep going, I'll know, yep, got it. Or yeah, this is not what I wanted. We're still gonna go through and we're still gonna finish it because there's still steps and a process through here that'll help me on the next piece. So keep that in mind when you're, you're creating stuff. Thanks, Karen. Everything comes with time. There are a few carvers I have seen and I have met that there's a guy, uh, Cody, Cody Stoats. Um, awesome carver. If you guys follow New Carver's page, big old spider hanging off my phone. You guys follow New Carver's page on our Beginner's Carver, Beginner Chainsaw Carvers, I think it is, on Facebook. Cody runs that. That dude is phenomenal, phenomenal. I don't believe he's been chainsaw carving very long in, in the scheme of things, but I believe... I think he said he did sculpting ahead of time like prior to chainsaw art there's something in there he did that has helped him along the way and uh how's it going oliver and uh and he's one of those guys though that has picked up a chainsaw and he's found a technique that works for him he can see stuff he sculpts it on an ipad ahead of time and he's able to see all his angles and things like there are there's different stuff that uh that you can do that'll work for you that may not work for me or you know you know what i mean as far as like design and practice and things like that 14 that's awesome oliver button splinters yeah yeah you're mushroom hunting and you're seeing uh, all kinds of stuff huh that's how it works. You'll start seeing all kinds of different things, you know, things that you can uh, turn those logs into. Hey, we got 25 people watching. Let's try to get those thumbs up to match. We got 10 thumbs up, 25 people watching. If you don't know how to give me a thumbs up on a live feed, look for the three dots on your screen. They're either down in the bottom or they're up at the top. You click that, you can give me a thumbs up and you're able to be right here in the live feed still. Also, I'm going to be having this t-shirt design loaded this week through Teespring. This will be a new design you guys will be able to get. We have t-shirts and hoodies and all kinds of stuff on top of the current design, which is keep gripping and ripping. Um, I designed this up myself, dripped the saws, came up with, you know, obviously we've all heard carve or starve. Um, decided I should turn that into a t-shirt because that's the truth. <laughs> carve or starve. Oliver, do you chainsaw carve? So you're 14, do you chainsaw carve? Or just enjoy watching. It's okay if you don't carve. That's fine too. You 
guys have carving questions, feel free to ask. I'll get back to those. Thank you out. Hey, thanks, Blood and Splinters. Like I said, we'll have these available through the Teespring store here pretty soon, hopefully this week. You guys can shop through that store. You'll see like a little shopping bag and videos and stuff, or it'll say store or whatever. You can click that and they'll be on there. I get it from wherever I can. Um, luckily, there's sawmills I could purchase from. They'll sell me just logs. You get a hold of somebody who's logging, you find a logging company, find a tree service company in your local area, somebody that brings trees down. How's it going, Suzanne? Um, tree service companies will help you out. Sometimes they got to get rid of those logs. Uh, for me in particular, I, uh, I, I'm pretty blessed with the fact that the majority of my brother-in-laws are in tree service. So uh, several of them have or still do work for Asplin or Lewis, which are companies subcontracted through Niagara Mohawks. They're always taking down stuff. But one of my other brother-in-laws has his own tree service business local to my area so he's got a whole log yard so if you guys if you watch my channel and i say i'm in the log yard i'm in the carving yard we're in the carving tent which is here like i got three different locations that i'll be in um but the log yard is his log yard and so i have the okay to use pine out of it so i'll go and i'll mark pine and i'll take chunks and you know do whatever um but yeah i also i wanted to bring up real quick guys I had a video up a while ago about modifying an MS-170 and I had some people asking for a video on this saw on my other channel, Kyle's Chainsaw Rescue. I've got like, I don't know, four or five videos now about this saw and some of the work that's been done to it. We've put an Amazon motor in it. We've put a whole different carburetor. It's got a whole different setup. So. For anybody that is or was interested in the MS-170, we were doing work on everything about it's on the other channel, Kyle's Chainsaw Rescue. So just so you guys know. Uh, Lisa, do I prefer green or dried wood? Do I cover it to keep the sun off it from drying too fast? So when it's in log form, I don't worry about it. I prefer green wood in log form. It's more forgiving. Pieces don't usually snap off when you're carving away. Um, if you can quarter a log to get the size that you want, that's the best. It won't crack as bad. I carve yellow pine for the most part, slow boy. Usually that's it. I don't do a lot of uh, you know hardwoods like maple and oak. That stuff beats on your saws. It's gonna mess you up as well. And it, it, it's just tougher to carve. So soft all right like yellow pine white pine a lot of people carve spruce i find a lot of sap pockets in it i'll carve whatever i can get my hands on sometimes but i mostly focus on yellow pine so that's it grows abundantly here we can get large trees and so that's what the majority of my pieces are carved from but again you guys can always check with like your local uh, tree service guys yeah, I don't get a ton of cedar here. We get white cedar, which I have a few chunks. This is a quartered piece of white cedar, but we always tend to have, uh, like this one isn't too bad, but there's always like rock pockets in it. And I, I don't get a whole lot of that.
So right now, I was talking about these t-shirts, right? Carve or Starve. Came up with the design and everything. Hope to have it on Teespring this week for you guys. This particular shirt, a few others I've got. I actually have my brother-in-law and his wife make them. They've got a little t-shirt company. They do designs and things. So that way there I could present them to you guys before they're actually available. Um, I am hoping, I'm going to get them through Teespring first, but at some point I'm hoping to set it up uh, maybe through, I've got a, a Shopify store, but I haven't got it fully set up. I want to get it set up where I can have these available through there so that when you guys order, it'll go through them. Because I'd rather support, you know, my brother-in-law and his wife and their small business and making t-shirts and stuff. But uh, I'm not sure how long that's going to take. We got we to gotta figure that out in timelines, you know, where... Right now with Teespring, I can set this up and you guys will be able to place orders and you know have them on their way. But that's something I'm planning on um, setting up the other store here in the near future. Yeah, so uh, Slow Boy, that's what I started was drawing. I did sketching, I, I drew on everything. My school books, I grew up drawing on the desk. I, I drew on everything. That was it, sketching and drawing, on anything on everything. And, uh, you know, it turned into eventually, well, I also like taking things apart and creating, just creating. But got older, bought our first house. I started building rustic furniture. And then my wife was like, hey, you should buy a chainsaw and start carving. And, you know, here we are. 2015, I started. And now we're making videos for, for all of you. Who'd have thought? <laughs> I still don't think I'm at the top of my game. I'm not the best. Plenty of other carvers that carve way better than I do, but I like to uh, I like to get on. I like to share my work. I like to spend the time with you guys and help you grow and cultivate your skills. Sometimes there's this misconception of somebody's, you know, like how how good they think they are if they have a YouTube channel and. That's, uh, yeah. I get all kinds of hate crap off to the side. It's unreal sometimes. The amount of messages you guys don't see, like in the public eye, because I just keep them hidden. Like people troll comment and things, and I just like hide all their... I hide their comments on like regular videos. Yeah, I appreciate it, Karen. I just, uh, you know, the moment you say that, the moment you start, I don't know. <laughs> Praising yourself, I always feel like it can be like the moment of your downfall. This is just like, I don't know. Oh, I don't know In my eyes, God's blessed me with this ability to do this thing, right? And yeah, it gets better the more I practice. But opportunity though you know I feel like just given to me to be able to make videos and share art and help teach you guys
sure how I feel about the face here, but it's going to be a is what it is in a moment. Sometimes there's this fine line of do I keep removing material or just start to get into shaping and leave it as it is. You remove too much, you can't put it back. You don't remove enough, it's too bulky and chunky. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Change the shape of this nose just a little bit. We got the die grinder though. This dog's got some big old eyes on it. Happy, happy Monday. It's gorgeous out here today. Gorgeous, gorgeous weather. Now you're just soaking it up. Okay. Something like that. Something like that. I gotta get these power tools plugged in now. Apparently I didn't do that. Carved live last weekend in Saratoga Springs, New York at the city center for the woodworking event. And, uh, yep. Woods by Wild, absolutely, absolutely. We are our own worst critics. This is 100% true. I could make a piece perfect according to everybody looking at it. And I would still more than likely not be super happy with it. For me though, that's like, that's the drive. Cause like if, if like what's gonna happen if I think, yeah, that was perfect. You know what I mean? Like, am I gonna stay stagnant in that area? Like I don't wanna do that. I wanna constantly be growing and improving. Right, like until animals look like a real animal, so you can look at that and go, is that a real dog or not? But it's all done, and I'm not even close to being where I want to be. And I may never hit that point. I may never reach the carving skills to make things look hyper-realistic, you know? That's okay, but that's like, a top tier goal so like there's still this this uh this drive this room for improvement this want this need to uh always do better for me because like i've got this goal that's like pretty high i think you know an end goal for carving and you know what that skill looks like And I want to try to carve all kinds of, like, I don't mind carving all kinds of stuff. One, I don't like to tell people no when it's a customer, you know, and they're looking, like, can you do this? I like to be able to open up a portfolio or my photo catalog and be like, well, you know, I've, I've tried it. I've done one. This is what it looked like. Is that what you want? All right. Let's see. We are gonna use the die grinder with quarter inch shaft, half inch flame burr from Sabertooth. All the burrs I use are Sabertooth burrs. We're gonna start cleaning this guy up, girdle up. I think it was a girl. Customer dog, so 
I don't know. Pretty sure it is, though. Pretty sure I'm going to have to remove material because I took away a little too much here. I should have left the eyes. Should have left the eyes a little bit, a little more meat to make them bulge. Like I said, I didn't take money down, so I'm okay with mistakes or not being dead on. If the customer's happy, cool. If they're not, eh, we might do another one.
Hey, 15 people watching and 15 thumbs up. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate that. 16 thumbs up. All right. Um, this is about two feet. You're going to be looking anywhere from 250 300 bucks at a piece that's around two foot tall there, Daniel. Desjarnet. Something like that. Um, carvings are based on what it is we're carving. So that's kind of uh, kind of depends, you know. Appreciate that, slow boy. Um, if you are interested, though, in like having a piece done, the best way to reach out is through Instagram. Be able to shoot me a message there because then we're able to talk details, your location. Uh, we can kind of, you know, send pictures of the dog back and forth, kind of thing, sketches, whatever, discuss size, total cost estimated cost and estimated shipping cost all those things come into play um, shipping is always a big fac factor boy says to me this content is underrated i want to tell you i appreciate that comment i'm going to tell you why it's not only until like this last month that i have gone live as much as i have um youtube put out a thing like they're promoting live streams and they want to that's what they want to promote people to do more live streams so i've been doing it more trying to follow their guideline right like i don't have to but if i want to grow my channel and i want to reach a new audience and, and draw more people into like what i'm doing and you know, hopefully teach them to do something that they can do. Um, I got to, you know, you got to play along to an extent. And uh, when I used to go live all the time, like when I went live, like once or twice a month in the past, I'd get like five viewers, 10 would be max. Today we've hit like 28 people at a rip. Oh, right now we got 19 people watching with 17 thumbs up. So that's pretty huge. Um, normally... You know, I'd love to eventually see where we're hitting like a hundred people watching at any given time. That would be absolutely amazing. So I'm just trying to, you know, keep up with that. Try, try and just to be real, like, you know, you guys see a time-lapse video and you're like, wow, how long did that take? Some things are quick. Some things are not. It's just depends on the piece, you know, 18 viewers, 18 thumbs up. You guys rock. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. think people truly don't understand how much of a job it is to have a YouTube channel plus like running your business and stuff like a lot of time a lot of effort goes into creating a video even if it's like a crappy video that you know you only get a couple hundred views but you know you still might have four five six eight hours total in that video between creating shooting and creating and making sure you got decent angles right your camera gear your editing time, doing a voiceover, teaching you guys how to do it, or just sharing it and adding music and uploading and realizing it's messed up and taking it down and doing it again. Like, stuff takes time. And then, like, in the end, you know, if you do, like, if you were to look at your hourly rate, you're making, like, a dollar an hour for a month if you're lucky. And it's like, holy cow. So, like, to do the YouTube thing, you know, it's like, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy getting on here. I enjoy talking with you guys, sharing, trying to help you guys out. Like, I enjoy this stuff. I ain't rich from it. That's for sure. We're not making money in hand over fist, you know, making videos. But I enjoy sharing and I enjoy doing it. So that's also why, like, I, I've seen it in comments before in my hidden, hidden comments. People complaining about, you know, 
me promoting products or me sharing t-shirt designs or things like that. Those are the only way you make money. I mean, you make money off views, but it's not substantial until your channel is uh, gigantic. Uh, have I, I have made a fish carving. I've done a couple. I actually have a video on here of a bass. I carved a bass jumping out of the water, going after a dragonfly. That's like four and a half feet tall. That's a few years back though. That's in the uh, time-lapse chainsaw carving stuff, just like chainsaw carving playlist somewhere way back. Uh, Karen, sometimes I do uh, premiere announcements, um, but like today, it just hit me like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna work on this. I'm gonna go live, see what everybody's up to. But sometimes I try to set a day and a time um, even with setting a day and time like that's going to be on the weekend, say, um, I'm lucky to reach, you know, 20 viewers at the same time. Um, it just, it, it, it's all about the YouTube and the algorithm and the way all that stuff kind of works. Yeah, Craig, so Craig's got it. You understand. So when I, when I you know, when I'm discussing, you know, your financial stuff and the things here, that's not it. But for me, the richness truly is time we're working for time you know what i mean it's always nice to have money and all the nice things and the new tools and to buy 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 right but like some of you i'll be old and some of you i'll still be young i'll be 40 this year i got one in college i got two at home we have our own home we have cars but like the reality is if you can figure out if you're younger and you're in your 20s and you can figure out how to work for time and not for riches and gold then you'll be rich the world has us confused society has us thinking we've got to keep up we 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 got to keep up that's not how it's meant to be you only have so much time here right you can have an endless amount of money but you only have so much time here work for time not for money Absolutely. Do what you love and love what you do. That's right. That worked for me. I'm a busy guy. Like, I'm doing all kinds of stuff. We got another snowstorm supposed to hit near the end of this week. All the snow's melted. We've had 50s. We're going to get hit with, like, 15, 16 inches of snow. I will be up bright and early, and I got, like, seven stops plus my own house, so eight places to go do snow removal first thing in the morning, all with a snowblower. And then... We'll do some work in the shop or maybe out here. We'll go out in the evening and do it again and probably again on Thursday because it's supposed to roll into two days. And then I'll go work my part part giant time job where I turn wrenches as a steel mechanic for a couple hours here and there. Uh, but this is my passion and that's the freedom I have to be able to do things I want to do, learn new stuff. And, you know, it doesn't always come out in the forefront, but be able to be available if my kids need me for something, if I gotta go, if I gotta, you know what, I'm staying home today and all that kind of stuff. How long do I wait before carving and varnish? Um, it just depends on how much moisture is still in, in the piece. Like this piece, and a lot of times, once you get carving for a while, you gotta, you'll be able to put your hands on a piece and have an idea of how much moisture is still in there. You know, like this piece, there's, there's still a fair amount of moisture in here but this piece has been quartered and it's been sitting for a little over a month. So I could, once it's done, hit it with the torch, put some paint on it and I'll let that sit. And then the next day, put some clear on it. So on, on a, a good rule of thumb though, depending on the size for which you're carving, what's going on, Chris from the UK. Thanks for stopping in. Um, Lisa, as far as like, how long do I wait? I think what you should do is wait until you feel the piece is fairly dry. Honestly, after you carve it up, I keep stuff under the tent, not out to get hit in the sun or be rained on. Um, a good a good little deal is like if you give it a week, it'll let that outer layer wick dry. You can touch it up a little sanding if it's needed, burn it or re-burn it, and then throw your paint on it. It'll stick better. It'll adhere more. You won't have that moisture right at the surface as much. At least that's been in my experience. Do I let everything sit a week? No. Um, I've had carving... Uh, cardinal orders flying in and out of here like crazy so it's been like quartering logs there's quartered chunks over here the whole i got quartered pieces all over the place in here 
and pieces like drying and just sitting ready, waiting to be turned into something. So it's like trying to prep, try to prep ahead of time, you know? And uh, some of that stuff's just cut. And some of that's been sitting a week or two weeks, even a month. And as I get to it, I'll knock out a dozen pieces, 20 pieces, try to get over to the log yard, get a bunch more ready, set aside, and then work on what I have and kind of rotating what, what's there and what's available. I don't know what you're trying to say to me. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. So there is something I do want to say, like new carvers watching, people jumping on, right? If you're going to get into carving, besides your PPE, personal protective equipment, right? Chaps, boots, gloves, earmuffs, eye protection, all that good stuff. Like three things. I guess you consider it four things, right, to invest in. With, with carving, one, your chainsaw, right? You got to have that to start chainsaw carving. Two, a jaw horse. And three would be a die grinder and for a flame bit right this is quarter inch shaft half inch green coarse flame burr from saber tooth with those items you can start carving anything like anything and you can sell it almost as is you hit it with the torch right clean it up after or just clean it down to this and get rid of pieces and make money and then add to what it is you need I know when I first started, I had heard a lot of carvers who've been in it a while, like you need a die grinder and you got to get discs and you got to get all these things for your die grinder or your angle grinder. Sorry, angle grinder, angle grinder. You guys watch a lot of my videos or we're here doing a lot of this. I don't pick this up a whole lot. Specific carvings I will, but this tool, this tool right here, die grinder, this thing gets used all the time. Uh, every single piece all the time so just thought i'd mention that for uh the beginners here hanging out watching today yeah i know you want to see it painted the only problem is all my paint is in the house <laughs> we've had weather from 20s to 60s and i don't want all my paint to dry but we're going to get it close to paint and then maybe we'll we'll probably make a reel or a short so you guys can see the completed piece
I'm kind of avoiding the eyes because I don't know what the heck I'm going to do there yet. So. <laughs>
Hey, hey, Isabel, Lowen Jax. Absolutely, I follow him. He's awesome. He is a cool dude. Art, Jesper, thanks for stopping by. I get it. Appreciate you being here, though. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, Isabella, like I was saying, um, yeah, Glowing Jacks, awesome channel. He seems like a great guy. Commented on stuff back in the day a couple times. I believe we follow each other on social media and things as well. Uh, Slow Boy, getting back here. Uh, did I start with big pieces or did I start with smaller and then go bigger? I started with like smaller pieces, smaller bears. Um, somewhat smaller, kind of, kind of small. I don't know. Let me think. Give me a second. I'm trying to remember, right? I started carving in 2015, trying to do a bear bust. So like this, right? This area and up. So the head and all that. Trying to figure out how to carve a head. And my first couple. Let me think here. My first bear I still have on our front porch. My first carving, which is this big, which is just the bust. One of these days I'll bring it back. So we got a lot of new carvers and stuff. So maybe we'll talk new carving and show you guys my first piece. Keep your first one. Keep it. Um, but anyway, through that first year into that second year, I carved pieces that were from here to, you know, maybe two, two and a half feet, but they were bulky. They were chunky. They were, you know, not a lot of detail, very square, very, you know, just not honed in sort of pieces. Um, now I try to focus on smaller stuff and then bringing that into bigger stuff. Cause I feel like if you can make this smaller piece on point, it's gonna be easier to do that big piece. I'd rather not mess up one, two, three thousand dollar carving that I've already started because in my mind I haven't been able to see all my angles and like kind of have an idea of direction and flow. I'd rather mess up a piece that's you know two feet tall as like a practice piece and then go in for the big one or do a couple of practice pieces and then go in for the big one. Now this isn't, this isn't really, this is a practice, but it's not, right? This is something the customer wants. I don't do a ton of these, so I'm giving it my best shot, right? And if it comes out great and they love it, awesome, sold. If they don't, that's all right. We're still gonna finish it. Somebody will buy it later on, no big deal. And we'll try and we'll attempt another one. That's how carving goes. That's how your mindset, mindset should be. Like, you should be trying to grow, strive, to do a little bit right you're working toward doing a little bit better with each one and like growing your skill thanks isabella i appreciate it so in comparison to the customer dog the snout is a little bit fat so i'm trying to figure out how to keep the shape because the shape is what i want but i'm trying to bring it in slowly slowly bringing it in and slowly working the face this is the kind of stuff where like, if you did it with the chainsaw, you're gonna take away too much, too fast. If you guys are here watching, be sure to give me a thumbs up, right? Get that YouTube algorithm rolling and working for me. You can do that by hitting the three buttons, three little dots, they're either at the top or they're down on the bottom. And if you guys are interested in a shirt or merch to support the channel, you can always check out the store tab, but I'm gonna have this design available later this week in the store tab through Teespring. And hopefully before the end of the year, We'll have a whole new Shopify store attached to the account. And I'm really hoping to be able to have my, my brother-in-law and his wife's, their business attached through that. So when you guys place orders, it'll actually be supporting a small business and uh, helping them take their business to the next level through what I'm doing here. So that, that's a goal that's on the plate. Um, dad, dad, do I ever get Carver's block? Yeah, absolutely. It happens. Um, you just got sometimes you got to like just push through it um i'll do a little more sketching I'll, I'll look at wildlife photos i will watch other carvers um see what's going on see what people are are you know getting into what are what, are, what is it that people want right now what are what are other carvers selling a ton of what are other people putting out in videos um you know there's some great great carving channels out there and i am not afraid to like share that because I'm not concerned as far as like competition, whose channel's growing better, who's doing bigger, who's doing better things and all that kind of stuff. I think it's great that we're all putting eyes on the world of chainsaw carving and that we're helping people cultivate something to, uh, to do what they want to do. 
do they want to buy a six color press? I'm not sure if they're there quite yet, but I, they have some goals. They have some goals. It's a small, just a small thing they do at home right now, but I know they've got big goals. So I like to think if I can get some designs that people love, I can get them selling. Yeah, it'll be through Teespring to start, but if I can get that uh, momentum rolling with people really wanting merch and t-shirt designs, then maybe I can help their business, you know, take their business to the next level. Oh, it wouldn't be a deal for me. <laughs> I'll say, since I've left that full-time job to do my own thing and work for time and not money, I find myself wanting to also encourage and help other people who are like pursuing a small business part-time or a hobby part-time that could be a business. like. I, I really do enjoy encouraging and trying to help them chase that dream of working for time and not money. You know, my, my brother-in-law and his wife, you know, they've got dreams of doing a few different things and uh, I've helped them out some and, and you know, he's got, a, he's got a YouTube channel actually that you guys could check out. It's Savage Archery and there's a number after it and darn it, I can't remember what number it is, but you can look up Savage Archery and uh, you'll see like a white background with a deer head and a bow and arrow and stuff. And that's a channel he just started. Loves archery, tunes bows, um, puts arrows together. Right now he's just slowly growing that channel and, and feeling out YouTube and, and seeing what it's like to shoot videos. But we spend time talking editing and how to grow that channel and how to build that thing up. Why? Because like the idea of being successful, right? In the world of like freedom, is awesome, but it's even better to like bring people along with you. And I, for me, it is at least, right? Like I want other people to experience that freedom and to have that time. So especially being able to help friends or family that are like pursuing things that like, I find myself being passionate about that as well. well I love it. Um, I like, I like doing small carvings more than big. Again, you mess up on a big carving and sometimes you mess up big you know, a piece that someone's planning to spend thousands of dollars on, which, yeah, it's just a chunk of wood, go get another one, but it's a real kick in the pants when you're like halfway through and you really make a mistake and you gotta start over, or you gotta glue and add pieces and at least small carvings, you know, it's, it's nothing to just go grab another chunk and say, hey, I'll just do another one, it's okay. showing you guys so I'm trying to do this customer dog all right trying to get this face honed in but I just noticed that her teeth show so I've got this lower jaw pretty pretty low and I think I'm actually gonna see if I can just squeeze the teeth in here a little bit and then bring the jaw up so it's not so heavy because she's got like a thin lower jaw right well I'll try to bring that jaw up but the other halves apparently she smiles with her teeth the lower teeth, a little underbite going. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Christina, you've got to uh, hit me up through Instagram if it's something you're serious about, and then we can go from there.
John Broadbent. What's going on, man? Um, Isabella, have I ever been in a carving show? You've been to a lot. I have not. Not like a true chainsaw carving carvers event like the rendezvous in Pennsylvania. Never been. I've never even been to it, let alone been in it, and I've never been in anything like that before. Um, I don't know. I don't like the stress or the idea of a competition. It would be great to go and carve and sell work, but at the same time, that's uh, quite a bit of money up front. Got to rent a trailer, got a plane to camp or stay somewhere, and then set up and do the whole event and hope that I make the money back that I spent and then some. Otherwise, I feel like I'm upside down. Um, wish that's not the way that it was, but that's, that's why it's tough for me to want to go do multiple day events that I've never even been to. Um, I would love to. Um, I think that has already come and gone or that's coming up, I think. But I've never even been to it. And I know a lot of carvers go there. I know a lot of carving YouTubers will be at that event or have been at that event. And um, you know what ends up happening? The kids have sports, the kids have games. And I have a couple events throughout the year that I am committed to locally. Um, like I just carved live in Saratoga Springs, New York, indoors at the city center. Use battery saws, power tools. I was promoting it for a few weeks leading up to that. Um, it's a woodworking event though. So I'm the only guy, only guy there chainsaw carving and uh, you know, having fun like that. Um, I carve it like a couple little local benefits and shows that go on just like, you know, within an hour or less drive of where I live. Um, but I haven't gone to anything really large in like taking the show on the road per se. Uh, like I said, it, you know, I don't even have a trailer. I use everything in my truck and it's a lot, you know, when it comes down to like renting a trailer, when it comes down to figuring out where you're going to stay and food and fuel and, uh, and, th and those sort of things. And then for me at that point, I try not to always think about numbers, but like if I'm going to do an event, I want to at least say, Hey, you know, like an event like that, I want somebody to come with me. I want to be able to pay them for their time and I want to be able to have money in my pocket as well. So it's, it's, it's different. It's tough. You know, like you said, your dad's been carving and, uh, I'm, I'm sure he's going to be at the event. I, I bet. And, uh, yeah, I just haven't, uh, haven't done one. Ah, Christian, get out of here. <laughs> uh, Motivex. No, nah, no carving contests this year. I mean, I might do one on the channel for uh, beginners to start carving at. People can enter their work. We'll do a prize giveaway, that sort of thing. Draw a name from a hat because I'm not going to, like, judge people's pieces. Christian working on a dog. Working on a dog. All right. Let me see if we can mess up the eyes. Oh, we got to finish the snout. I gotta finish the nose on this thing here first.
Christian, while you're standing there watching, be sure you're handing out my cards, you know. Alright. Let's see if we can get these we can get these big eyes here figured out. Lisa, uh, your other artwork, you hear people prefer wall hangers, right? Um, I don't get a lot of requests for them, but I haven't done a ton of them in the past, so I haven't had, you know, a lot of orders for them. I am working on some, though. I actually got one. Uh, started here. We started at the show last weekend. So tree tree the moon another tree we'll have an owl if it works out and a moose kind of standing in all of it no video though probably won't get this one working on this one today as i'm trying to get this dog carved up at least but working on getting some wall hangers in the uh 
the old portfolio.
Oh, sawdust up the old nose. Uh, all right, let's get back here. Isabel, do I like to do custom carvings? Yes and no. Custom carvings are fun. They'll push you. Um, you know, you've got you've to gotta try new things and try to get your head wrapped around what it is the customer wants. Dogs are something new. I don't do a whole lot of dogs. I have some dog videos on here carving, but I, I haven't done a ton of them. So, um, you know, it's something new. It's, custom carvings are great because you've got to step outside of your comfort zone and push yourself, right? Karen, yeah, I watch Ryan cook from time to time. I don't watch a ton of a ton of videos. I really don't. Um, if I've got Carver's Block or I'm having a hard time coming up with new ideas or concepts, I'll, I'll pull up YouTube and I'll watch some other Carvers. I'll watch... Uh, sculptors whether it's with metal or clay or or other things and kind of get you know the ideas flowing and, and things like that um but yeah like great channels to watch ryan cook um shoot i could see all these faces and now everybody's name is, is slipping my mind uh chainsaw jenna she's got a great channel um there's another one she's i think she's in russia she's got some great carvings that she does uh, I think it's, uh, is it Tay? Tay Marie, I think. See, and I've even talked to some of these people, and I, I get on here and get on the spot and forget names. Um, she's got a good carving channel. Um, I know most of you that watch mine have watched Jordy on Carving Fusion. He's got, you know, if you want to do faces and stuff, he's got a lot of that good stuff going on. Even Glowing Jacks, he's got a great channel. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of them though. There's a bunch of there really are a bunch. Well, I'll, I'll work on putting a video together and I'll, I'll give them channels a shout out because then I can put everybody's name down and I can work it all out. Um, do I ever find use for a finger sander? Well, John, it, it's one of those tools where I bought a cheap one years ago and I really didn't use it that much. I find myself using the die grinder with the flame burr as much as I use a chainsaw. Um, I find this does everything that I'm trying to achieve. That could change, right, as time goes on and my stuff progresses and I see a real use for for the, the file sander or the finger sander. But as of right now, for me, I don't. Um, I'm seeing a lot of carvers picking those up and using those, but I am finding myself getting results that I like using the die grinder right now. Um, that may evolve. That could evolve in the next month and that could evolve in the next year. So you never know, you know. Um, but for right now, I don't, I don't really use one. I don't have one. I, well, I do have one. I've got, uh, let's see here. I got a cheap Harbor Freight one because I wasn't going to go spend two, three hundred dollars on a really expensive one until I could figure out if I really needed this tool or not. Now, depending on the piece, it can come in handy, like using it over here on the moose in the trees carving for the wall hanger. It'll come in handy, like cleaning up around the legs and just doing like a final sanding sort of thing. But as a tool that I absolutely need in my lineup, I mean, I've been carving since 2015 and I've used this maybe 20 times where I can't even count how many times I've used the die grinder. So maybe I just need to watch some more videos of some pros using it and then maybe I'll have to, uh, I'll have to get one. Yeah, I'm, so I'm with you, John. You know, I see a lot of people using it, and maybe, same as you, maybe I haven't found how to actually <laughs> work it into the piece properly. I don't know. So, here's the, here's the hope to achieve something similar. We're not quite done yet today. We're going to flap sand this, and we'll see where we're at with details. All right, and here is the big eyes. Got some teeth. I know this looks all cut up here, but it's not. It's just the color of the wood. This is actually rounded over. Where I get a better angle here. It's just the color of the wood in there. It makes that look like it's all chainsawed up, doesn't it? But we got our teeth showing in here. happy with it. We're not doing a lot of dogs. 
It'll take some time. We'll do some more, though. I'm going to flap sand it and then see uh, what else I can do for detail before wrapping this piece up today. Uh, throw this guy back on it. I think is gonna be that for today, guys. A 
let this piece sit till tomorrow before it actually gets any paint and a burn and all that. We'll let it air off. Get some moisture out of there. I'm pretty happy with it for not doing a ton of dogs. Not too bad. Next one will be better. Isabella, I mostly carve white pine, so that's a softer, a softer one. Carves easy, it's forgiving, but that's what I lean toward is, uh, what I say, white, yellow pine, yellow pine. Um, thanks, John. Never have the space or time for larger carvings. Yeah, I get that. I can understand that, you know. I think being able to hone that skill in though and hone in the details and stuff on smaller pieces, if you gotta do a big one, you'll have you'll have the skill and the knowledge to just, just size it up, you know? You'll be able to do it. So this was it. Ugh. Something like that to something like this. I got a couple more dogs people want me to do, so we'll probably be doing some more of these in the future. Appreciate you guys being here. Be sure to check out the store tab. We're gonna have this new design out and available later this week. Right now, there is uh, keep gripping and ripping design out. You guys can get that in t-shirts and hoodies and stuff that is currently available in the store tab. Um, currently in the store tab for this live feed, I think I got the jaw horse and the flap sander if anybody's looking. And I've been adding to the store tab and all my other videos. So beginner videos, tutorials. Um, I think there's a couple chainsaws the jaw horse, chaps, safety gear, and some tools that I was able to find and add to that store tab. You guys buy through the store tab, it helps support the channel. And obviously, if you guys buy merch through that store tab, it helps support the channel. I do appreciate it. Um, Isabella, the dog will get paint and color probably tomorrow. I'm gonna let it sit overnight. Um, it's five o'clock, it's time to go do the dinner thing. So I've gotta get out of here and go do that. Once I have it done though, I will do a short video referencing this piece from the live feed. Um, I try to do that so then if people watch that short, they can click down in the corner and come back and watch this once it's uploaded. It, it'll be uploading once we're done here and we're done going live and then everybody can watch it later on. I am located in upstate New York near the Adirondacks. I like to say upstate New York because it is not New York City and there's a difference. And if you're from New York City, sorry, kind of. Um, appreciate you guys watching today though. I gotta get off this live feed. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you guys haven't already. Check out that store tab and uh, have an awesome rest of your week. I'll see you guys later.